Hi, I'm Jimmy. In this video, we're looking at Home Depot, ticker symbol HD. So in this video, we're gonna look at the basics of Home Depot's business. We're gonna look at some of their numbers. Then we're gonna to try to come up with the fair value for Home Depot stock to see if Home Depot is worth buying today. But before we get into that, let me tell you real quick about an investing platform we're building. So this is going to be a platform, a website that you can analyze all different stocks. We're starting with valuation. Now we've already built the discounted cash flow calculator and we're gradually going to add all other, all the other different types of valuation methods. So the theory is that you could punch in the ticker for any type of stock. And then when you punch in that ticker, it, the website will kick back the best valuation methods for that particular company, given whatever their financial history has been. Well, this would work for well for like a fast growing company like Tesla or a bank or even a stalwart company, a blue chip type of company like Apple. Now, what we're doing while this website's being built is we're locking in the price for anybody who signs up now. Anybody who signs up, the price will never go up on you. So you become a member of the platform, you get access to our private investing community, and you can help us test out the beta versions of the website as we gradually roll out more valuation methods and more different ways to analyze stocks. So if you'd like to sign up, I will leave a link in the description below. But for now, let's jump over to our analysis of Home Depot. Now, Home Depot is a home improvement store, much like Lowe's or Ace Hardware or Menards or b and if you're over in Europe. And basically what they do is they sell things like tools, paint, lumber, appliances, and the list goes on and on. Now, they segment their customers into two primary groups. They have the professional market and the call it the consumer market or the do-it-yourself market. And they estimate that they're, that the addressable market share is about $450 billion each. They claim they only have about 17% of that total addressable market. So in theory, there's plenty of upside. Never mind the fact that they're only in North America, pretty much only in North America right now. And this chart is a chart of their revenue, according to last year's revenue, broken out by region. And we could see that 92% of revenue is generated in the United States, while the remaining revenue is generated internationally. But internationally is mostly uh, Mexico and Canada. So they've really stuck in their local market. They've really stuck in North America. In the United States, they have a bit over 2,000 stores. And internationally, they have a bit over 300 stores. So again, plenty of room for growth. Okay, now let's jump over to their revenue. So we can see by their revenue, that revenue over the past few years have really ramped up coming out of COVID, which is probably logical. And it's also expected that revenue is continuing, going to continue to ramp up, at least according to analyst estimates. Now, just so everybody's on the same page, the yellowish orange bar here is the past 12 months. Green bars are analyst estimates. So the past 12 months has already happened. Green bars have not happened, but that is consensus estimates, in this case, for revenue. Okay, now, one of the things that I want to, one of the things I'm hesitating with is that when I look at something like this, a lot of people that I've talked to about Home Depot are very excited about the fact that revenue has ramped up a ton recently, and that makes a lot of sense. But I don't, I want us to be careful of thinking that just because growth is improving, that this is the best time to buy it. It might be, but we really got to get to the valuation side, which we're going to jump over to the website in a minute, take a peek at their valuation. But just to illustrate this point, if we were to look back at 2006, and if we were to jump in, if we had bought that stock back then, well, on, our, on average, the average return on an annual basis from then, if we bought at the end of 2006, all the way through today, when revenue was ramping up at its most at that time, our average return would be just 16%. Now, of course, just 16%, 16% is a great return considering the stock market on average has returned over the past like 100 years, 50 years, like 10% a year. So 16% is good. But if we bought this after the revenue started declining and instead we bought at the bottom here, well, our returns would have instead been closer to about 22% per year. So my point is that don't necessarily get caught up. I'm, I'm hoping people don't get caught up in the fact that, oh, revenue is ramping up. Therefore, I get to jump in and buy this thing now. We can, but only if the price is good. Luckily, the market's been beaten down recently, so it's very possible this is a good one. Okay, for now, let's clean this up a bit, and then we're going to jump in and try to understand better why this jump recently is happening. What is going on with revenue 
to call, or what is going on with, call it the broader economy to make this happen? Well, one of the first things that has happened is inflation has really ramped up. Higher inflation, you're going to naturally get higher prices. Revenue is not adjusted for inflation. So that, that makes sense that that's going to add at least some to their growth. Second, they actually have more people coming into the stores. They have a higher customer count than they previously had. Plus, those customers are on average spending more money every time that they visit the store. The average ticket per customer is also going up. And then finally, right now, for anybody who hasn't been paying attention to the housing market, well, home repairs is really in a hot market right now. So that alone is going to increase companies like Home Depot or all their competitors. It's going to increase their revenue a decent amount. Now, just to illustrate some of these, to prove some of the points here, let's jump over to how we can prove that more customers, more revenue per customer is actually happening. So in Home Depot's annual reports, they have all the data for this chart. And we can see that in the most recent quarter, the average ticket for per customer is about $90 per customer. That's up from a below 60 just a few years ago. So overall, this trend is really helping Home Depot's overall business. Another important point that I think uh, addresses how hot the market is right now is this chart right here of, this is the average mortgage rate for 30-year fixed mortgages. And we can see that in recent in the past year, especially recent months, mortgage rates are up above 6% right now. So we can see that for many years, interest rates to get a mortgage, to buy a house, the mortgage, the interest rate that we would pay has been fairly low relative to, you know, a long period. Relative to today, it was fairly low. Well, people have, in the past decade or so, often as they outgrew their house, People have bought new houses and you're constantly sort of flipping over houses, which is easy to do and easy to explain, especially when mortgage rates are falling. But when they go up, oftentimes what happens is people, instead of jumping out to get a new house with a new higher mortgage, they say, you know what, let's fix this house up. We're going to stay in this house a bit longer. We're going to do the repairs. We're going to put in an extension. We're going to do whatever we have to do to make this house better. Never mind the fact that people have been home for two years, probably adding a little extra wear and tear to their house thanks to COVID and all that stuff. So that helps explain at least partially the hotter housing market, not the hotting house, hotter housing market, but the hot, hotter home repairs market, which brings us back to their revenue, which helps explain that why in these recent time period, revenue has jumped up and is expected to stay there for at least a couple more years. Okay, now before we jump out of valuation, let's take a quick look at their free cash flow because this is an important component to this. So we can see that free cash flow over the past couple of years has actually declined. Don't forget the orange bar here, or the yellowish orange bar, I'm not sure what color that is, but the yellowish orange bar there is the past 12 months. Free cash flow has dropped a decent amount, but analysts are expecting for free cash flow to start moving higher. Now we might ask, why is free cash flow dropping? We saw revenues going higher. Why is free cash flow dropping? And the answer is actually an unusual one relative to most situations. And that is that inventories are actually going up. This is a chart of inventories. If you're looking for inventories, by the way, you can find the current level of inventories on their balance sheet. Go back a few, the past few years, you can make a chart just like this. But we can see that right now, inventories are relative to their own history, fairly high. They're very, very high relative to their own history. But this is important because adjustments in inventory, if you increase your inventory, well, that comes out of that is an adjustment to make to cash flow from operations. So if you really ramp up your inventory like Home Depot has, cash flow, at least in the near term, because they had to lay out all that cash to increase their inventory, well, cash flow looks much worse. But when we jump back to the free cash flow chart here, we can see that analysts are expecting for free cash flow to get better. To get better. But this is logical if you think about it, because when it was declining, they spent all their money on adding inventory. You know what they don't have to buy right now? Inventory. They already have it in place. Plus, they're also adding new, uh, some new distribution facilities and things like that to make their business a bit more efficient. So that has added to sort of the operational efficiency of the overall organization. So from a 
structural business perspective, it seems like Home Depot's in a pretty good position. Now, if you're curious to learn more about how inventories work, I actually did a video just recently on inventories and the ramp up Target actually increased their inventories a ton as well. A lot of companies are. If you're curious how that could affect their financial statements, the ratios, things like that, did a video on that recently. I'll put a link to that video in the description below. But for now, let's jump over to our fair value calculation of Home Depot stock. So we can see Home Depot stock is trading at about $275 per share. The fair value for the stock before debt in cash, if we don't include debt in cash, well, we get a fair value of about $288 per share. Now, if you want to take out there about $44 per share in net debt, which is a uh, debt per share, which is debt minus cash. If you want to remove that, well, we end up with a fair value of about $244 per share. Now I was curious. So I went ahead and looked up, I did the math for what is Home Depot's weighted average cost of capital and their weighted average cost of capital is actually about 8.1%. Now I'm using 9% as required rate of return, which is where these fair values come from. But if we want to use their weighted average, their own weighted average cost of capital of 8.1%, well, we can see suddenly the stock at the current price where the stock is falling a decent amount. Well, the stock looks like it could be undervalued, getting a fair value of about $290 per share. So for me, what I'm doing with Home Depot stock is I'm actually keeping Home Depot stock in my bullpen. I've had it in my bullpen for a while. Now, Although the company at an 8.1% required rate of return, their own cost of capital looks like it's a good deal. I prefer to stick with my 9% cost of capital just because it's sort of me. I have these rules that I created and I'm trying to stick by them and sort of let that guide me through the world of investing. Now, if you'd like to learn about the process that I use to analyze stocks, I actually did a video where I go through the eight steps I use to analyze the stock. If you'd like to, I'll leave a link right here. I got a link in the description below. And thank you so much for sticking with me all the way to the end of the video. I really do appreciate it. Thank you, and I'll see you in the next video.